Welcome back to Fix It In Post. My name is Nick and today we are going to look at actually animating, finally animating our character in a walk cycle. Okay, before we go any further, I just want to take you through some of the basics of the keyframes that are required in a walk cycle. So we'll just look at these eight keyframes that basically make up the walk cycle. As you can see, this is a very low frame animation, but as you can see from the animation, uh, this is basically the eight keyframes that you need to set up in order to make a walk cycle basically happen. As you can see in frame one, you go, it starts with this sort of V shape. Frame two, the body drops a little bit and the knees bend a little. Uh, frame three, the body shoots up and the leg, uh, one of the legs will be uh, perpendicular to the floor as the other one comes through. Uh, frame four, uh, the body moves forward a little bit and the, uh, the, the, basically the shift of the body is leaning forward. And then, and now we're up to frame five, which is the reverse of frame one. Frame six is the reverse of frame two. Frame seven is reverse of frame three. And frame eight is the reverse of frame four. And then we're back at the beginning. So that's the basic walk cycle. And I'm gonna take you through those basic poses um, in the tutorial. All right. Uh, let's go to designing this character based on the character that we just created in our previous tutorial. Um, so here we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this guy, I'm just going to copy him and take him into another composition. So let's call this walk cycle. Cool. Now we probably don't need, um, we probably don't need all that much all that much uh, what do you call time because it's going to be a very it's a very short cycle in terms of I think it's really it's only a few frames so let's make sure we set the comp right I set it to 25 uh, you know what we let's just set it to 18 mm, no let's set it to 25 I'll, I'll make it 25 that makes sense and this only needs to be at most five seconds I don't think it needs to be even more than that to be honest it's very very uh very generous. Okay, we're going to set a keyframe every four frames. So this is basically how we're going to set this up. We're going to set and we're going to start with the up and down motion of a walk. So let's start there. And I'm going to set the ground plane. So I'm going to bring the ruler down. All right. So if you don't know how to get the rulers up, um, I think it's view show ruler. Um, otherwise, you can just press command or control R to get the rulers to come up. So I'm just going to pull this down. In fact, let's make it easier than that. Let's not even do that. Let's just make this Let's just make the floor, like the edge of the, the bottom of the screen, the ground plane. So that's the ground. All right, let's start. So first, um, let's, I just know from experience that we're just going to make him just a little bit below the floor, just a teensy bit below the floor, because we've got to go into that first position. So let's set a keyframe there and make him just below the floor. Now let's count one, two, three, four. I'm using page up and page down to get the uh, frames to go forward. Let's set another keyframe. And this has got to go down just a little bit more. We can readjust this as we go. And then we count another four. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to go. Now what I would do is I would copy this position and just make it go up a little bit. So I press shift up to kind of get that position. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four. And we're going to go up even a little bit more. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four. And we're going to copy all those frames and then paste them. And that is the beginning of the walk cycle. Let's set the leg positions. So um, let's do the, we'll just do the right leg or we'll do the left leg first. So let's press R to get the rotation up and let's set a keyframe. In fact, let's set a keyframe for all these guys. So let's press R for all of them and let's set keyframes for all of them so we don't forget. Um, and then we'll do the same with the left. Did I not rename these? Naughty, naughty Nick. Oh no, I did. There you go. I was going to say, I was like, what happened? I thought I renamed them. <laughs> let's press R, uh, press shift and select all those and then press R, bring up the rotation. And let's do this. Let's set the first keyframe for these two. So let's go to the rotation for the thigh and let's make it, it's got to be more like this open V shape. Um, kind of like scissor legs. And that's probably a little bit too low now that I look at that keyframe. So we want the, we want his, the, the heel, the front of his toe and his heel to be touching the ground. So, oops, that's the wrong one. I want this to be level. 
So let's set it to that. So it's thereabouts. All right, the next one is the front, the front leg knee has to bend a little bit. So, and so is the back leg. So it's sort of like this leg needs to collapse a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just move it up a little bit and it's a bit more exaggerated. This is very exaggerated, by the way. It's probably not exactly how you would do it. But like I said, it's it's not an exact science. Um, all right, and we're going to move the back leg. And this one has to collapse a little bit too. So I'm going to bring this one in a little bit. And just bring that up like that. So now I've got those two. So you can see what happens there. He said it goes up and down. And now this leg has to come, this leg has to swing back this way, so it's like that. So, let's swing him back like this. So sort of straight, and let's make this foot as parallel to the ground as possible. I mean, perpendicular to the ground as possible. And let's bring this one, uh, let's bring this leg, it's got to swing forward, so I can take the next step. So let's swing this forward. It doesn't have to be anything too dramatic, just has to move forward in that motion. All right, now this, the, the one at the back, which is our R leg, we'll have to just swing all the way, like we want it to swing backwards. So it looks like it's pushing the person forward. Um, this is the interesting thing is that the, the motion of actually walking is like falling, if that makes sense. Like, you're constantly f falling forward is, is generally how you think about walking. So you're pushing yourself and then you're moving your body forward and your l this leg, your the leg that's coming forward catches you as just before you fall, like, you know, hit the ground. So um, this one doesn't have to move too much forward. I would probably just put it there. It doesn't have to be too much motion. So there, it looks like he's doing the moonwalk. And then we want to essentially duplicate the shape, the scissor shape that we had before. So let's make this straight. It needs to be straight, it's an important thing. That's straight. And this back leg will make something like that. Um, okay, so that's half the walk cycle done. And now let's do the next motion. So it's just, um, we want I'm going to zoom in a bit more. Then we'll make this leg. I'm going to start speeding this up a little bit more. So I'm going to press W to get the rotation tool to come up, which is that. And I'm just going to, just because I've done this a billion times, it's a bit easier for me to just do it this way. Um, yeah, we can probably set it like this. Um, let's make this a bit higher. Okay, and this leg can probably come... It's always a bit harder to select these back legs because, you know, they're just always hidden behind stuff. There we go. Um, now we want to make sure that this leg comes down and it's more straight with the ground. More perpen like we want it to be perpendicular with the ground, like that. And this leg, we want to come through. You don't have to move it all that much. It just has to swing through, like, and then this leg needs to swing back a little bit more, going up a tippy toes a little bit. I've seen people where they really exaggerate that, that front pose. It looks like it's really like them falling over. Oops, that's not what I wanted. W again for the rotation. Again, it doesn't have to be anything too dramatic. And then we're going to count one, two, three, four. And what's the beauty is that we can just duplicate this last I'm going to copy this keyframe, copy every keyframe from the beginning and put it at the end and it should loop. You should, if you've done it correctly, which I hope I have, I'm just going to go back one frame. So go back one frame and let's see if, how we're going. So it's, it's okay. It's a little bit, he slips a little bit at the end. Like, I don't know if you can see, but he sort of drags his. So here's another trick that I like to do to kind of fix up some of the, he looks a little bit, he looks like he, let's have a look here. He looks like he has a limp. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just make sure that I duplicate because I think what I did was that the up and down motion's got to be a bit more consistent, which I think is what I messed up here. So yeah, so I've just got to fix up some of these because I know that one of these guys didn't connect properly. So it was this one. So this one didn't connect, so i got to fix up these guys. What I mean was that when I was looking at the motion, I noticed that it's not, uh, then it's the ground isn't connecting with the, uh, sorry, the, the up and down motion wasn't consistent on both walks, which would be, which would, you would only have that problem if the person had a limp, but you kind of really notice it a lot more uh, on people <laughs> when you don't, because you, you look at walks all the time. That's a bit better. Now he looks a bit more like he's walking. Okay. Okay, that's good. So the important thing that you need to look at is the up and... So again, the up and down motion is really important because you want to make sure that they actually are walking up and down at a very good motion. So um, if you want to put a bit of smoothness on it, you can. I, I don't always do it, but you know, you, you can make the up down motion a little bit smoother by putting some easy eases on it. Um, I don't know if you can notice the difference, but it does look a bit better. All right, so let's do the swing of the arms as well. So first off, you got to remember that uh, these things, let's make sure there's keyframes in here. The, you got to make sure that you know that the rotation of the arms will always be opposing the leg that it's on. So in this, in this instance, you wouldn't have this arm like this when the leg is straight like this because uh, that's not how you walk. It's always the opposite arm. So if, you're, if your arm is going this way, uh, sorry, if your leg is going in this direction, then your arm would be going in this direction. So that's always, that's something that, well, to be honest, I made that mistake when we first started animating. So, okay, so this is kind of the tricky part. So when the actual highest part of your arm will actually be at the second keyframe, so I always set the first one there anyway, because I think you need it, but we'll come back to them, fix up that problem in a second. So I'm just going to set a keyframe here. So if that makes sense. So when you go down, your arms are at the highest, like swung up at the highest uh, at this point. So it would be there is where you're, so this is the tricky part because it'd be nice if it was at the highest point at the first frame, but it's actually at the second frame. So let's, uh, Let's make sure that we set that up nicely. You wouldn't actually see this. You don't see this arm very well, but it's there. It's it's working. It's magic. Hey, this hand isn't ro hand isn't rotating to this forearm. There you go. That's better. Okay. All right. So and the low, at the highest point is when the arm should be straight. Sorry, that was my mistake. I thought that sounded wrong. Oh, it's always a bit hard to remember this stuff. <laughs> when the arms should be, so the highest point is when the arms would be straight. If you think about the physics of it, that's when your arms would be straightest would be at when you're, when you're going straight up and lowest again, when you're going back down, um, highest again, when you're going back down. So let's see how this works. And we go up, we can just duplicate these frames because they're pretty much identical. Okay, and then, all right, the last step we need to do is actually figure out how to solve this issue where we've got the, we don't actually know what the turn is for the first frame. So that's the tricky part. So what I got to do is try and figure out what the first frame, for what the first frame is, because we actually come in mid frame. So actually where the swing cycle comes in is here. So that's the tricky part. So that's what we've got to figure out. So let's, oh, sorry, there's a rotate, there's a key missing here. So let's get rid of these ones. These were just set up as arbitrary keyframes, so I had somewhere to start. But okay, so let's figure it out. So where, if we were in in theory, if this were to loop, um, it would actually loop two frame, four frames after this. So let's count one after. It would loop four frames after the last frame. So one, two, three, four. Let's set the keyframes for what it would be here. Okay, and let's go back to the previous four keyframes and it should interpolate the the actual keys keyframes that we need for us, basically solving that for us. So let's drag those there, drag those there. I probably need those keyframes too actually, now that I think about it. But we'll just see how this looks, so 
Yeah, that's not too bad. That actually looks pretty, pretty good. Now, there's lots of little things you can do to kind of add a bit more life to this guy, but that's basically, you know, in in the in the nuts and bolts of it, that is how you do a walk cycle. It's not not particularly taxing, but that's how you set up a general walk cycle. Now, to give him a bit more life, you could make his head bobble a little bit. So, um, let's say. Let's give him a little bit of a head rotation every every eight frames. So you can kind of play around with this to kind of get some interesting looks. So it looks like every time he takes a step, his head moves a little bit. Okay, so you've got your basic walk cycle set up now, and so it's looping pretty well. So, but how do you use this in a general animation now? If you want to, you would. What I used to do was to just duplicate all these frames if I wanted to make it more walk longer than uh, you know. How long is this? walk longer than, you know, actually it only goes for like a second and seven frames. Um, so you would just like, you know, go through and duplicate all your frames. Oops. Essentially, I would just copy and duplicate and duplicate until I got as much as I want. But there is an easy way to kind of get around it. Um, Cause this is what I found. So just find where your last frame is. So, and make sure that you, so when you press N, to select your last frame, make sure you go back one frame so it selects the the actually ends on the last frame, not like after the last frame. If that makes sense. And then click on trim comp to work area. So I just right clicked in here and just click trim comp to work area. And we'll just keep that as a walk cycle. Now, if you import that, let's make a new um, a new comp uh, walk cycle loop. So what we'll do is we'll bring this in here and it only goes for five seconds. So obviously it's, it just disappears. Now, it would be nice if you could just go interpret footage and just make it loop. But unfortunately, After Effects doesn't let you do that, which I think is a bit dumb. But you can go to time, enable time remapping and make sure these two keyframes are set up. Again, like the last, like, I don't know why it does this, but just press uh, O to go to the end and then make sure you set a keyframe there. Just trust me on this one and delete that very last keyframe. I don't know why it does this, but if you don't do it, it doesn't work properly. It makes the character disappear for a frame. And then here you got to type this expression. So alt or option, click on the stopwatch and type loop underscore out, no or lowercase, open bracket, uh, double quotation marks, cycle, close quotation marks, and then close bracket. All right. So what happens now is that when you stretch this out, oops, when you stretch this out, it should loop. There you go. You've got a walk cycle and now you can do anything you want with this. You can go make this guy um, walk across the screen as, as you would in real life. Oops. So let's have a look. It's walking a bit fast. Let's make him walk a bit slow. It's a bit trial and error for me too. There you go. It's not looking too bad. So there you have it, guys. That's how you do a basic walk cycle. I'm going to show you how to basically rig using the Duix script in the next tutorial. Um, and I'll show you how to animate a, uh, a conversation between two people. But I hope that's helped. Um, you should be able to still do some pretty cool stuff with this rig anyway. Um, just wait next week and we'll have a new tutorial about this as well. Thanks for listening. And uh, I will, hey, if you guys want to send me some stuff to have a look at, I would love to see the work that you guys are producing. All right. Thanks for listening. See you next week.